Who are you going to believe? Rudolph Giuliani or Rudolph Giuliani? I'm not alcoholic. I'm a functioning, I'm probably, probably function more effectively than 90% of the population. The same Rudolph Giuliani told a reporter while he was drinking a Bloody Mary, I love scotch. I can't help it. All of the malts. And part of it is cigars. I love to have them with cigars. I'm a partier. Rudolph Giuliani's previous wives have a less than charitable view of him as a partier. One of the witnesses to the January 6th committee testified under oath that Rudolph Giuliani was drunk on election night 2020 when he told Donald Trump to publicly go out there and declare victory, which Donald Trump did, knowing that it was not true. What was your observation about his uh, potential intoxication during that, that discussion about what the president should say um, when he's addressed the nation on election night? And the mayor was definitely intoxicated, but I do not um, know that his level of talk intoxication when he spoke uh, with the president. And we don't know his level of intoxication when Rudolph Giuliani said this. When I went to bed on election night, he was ahead in all those states, every single one of those states. How is it they all turned around? Every single one of them turned around? Or is it more consistent that there was a plan to turn them around? And since there are witnesses who say there was a plan to turn them around, and it kind of begs credulity to say that it all happened in every single state, my goodness, this is how you win cases in a courtroom. How drunk does your lawyer have to be before you stop following his advice? That is a question, a legal question, that Donald Trump's criminal defense team will have to answer when he goes on trial on March 4th in Washington, D.C. Rolling Stone is reporting, in their questioning of multiple witnesses, Smith's team of federal investigators have asked questions about how seemingly intoxicated Giuliani was during the weeks he was giving Trump advice on how to cling to power, according to a source who's been in the room with Smith's team, one witness's attorney and a third person familiar with the matter. Some witnesses told Smith's team that they saw Giuliani consuming significant quantities of alcohol. Some told the special counsel's office that they could clearly smell alcohol on Giuliani's breath, including on election night. Some have already told investigators that they were directly aware of moments when Trump had talked to others about Giuliani's drinking and that Trump spoke negatively about his then top lawyer's alcohol consumption. NBC News has not independently confirmed Rolling Stone's drunk lawyering reporting. Glenn Kirshner is back with us. Glenn, so how drunk does your lawyer have to be uh, before your defense based on uh, advice of counsel completely collapses? It sounds like the setup for a punchline, Lawrence, but here's the thing. You know, reliance on advice of counsel can be a viable defense. Think about one of the more ordinary circumstances. My tax lawyer told me I could take this deduction, and it turns out you couldn't take that deduction. It was illegal to take that deduction, but you may very well have an advice of counsel defense available to you. But I think implied, there's a word that's implied in the reliance on advice of counsel defense. It is reliance on advice of a sober counsel. Um, and, and, you know, so I think Donald Trump, you know, has a, an uphill climb here offering a reliance on the advice of counsel with a straight face. Here is, I think, even a more fundamental problem than Rudy Giuliani's possible intoxication when he's giving advice to his client. You know, when I saw the first indictment come out, the January 6th indictment, and we learned that Rudy Giuliani was one of the un unindicted co-conspirators, but pretty uh, easy to identify him as one of the six unindicted co-conspirators, even though he wasn't named. And then when I saw the Georgia indictment come out, where Rudy Giuliani is a charged co-conspirator of Donald Trump, there is no such thing as reliance on advice of co-conspirator defense. And I, I don't say that in a snarky way. 
you know, if your co-conspirator is your counsel, you really are deprived from arguing that you were relying on the advice of counsel because you're being charged as being part of a criminal conspiracy with your counsel. So I think whether drunk or sober, that dog ain't going to hunt. If Rudolph Giuliani uh, takes the witness stand uh, in his own defense uh, in, in this trial, is it relevant to ask him about his drinking? Is there a line of inquiry that could be relevant? No, any criminal litigator will tell you the scope and the breadth of cross-examination is wide. And, you know, judges can get in trouble for unduly curtailing cross-examination. So absolutely, his level of intoxication at any time relevant to a fact of consequence in the prosecution is fair game on cross-examination. Um, and the other thing, you know, you might want to start by cross-examining Rudy Giuliani after he's administered the oath and swears to tell the truth. You know, your first line of cross might be, well, to you, truth isn't truth. Isn't that right? And if he's, he's got nowhere to go because you can play the tape, right? Just press play on cross-examination with Rudy Giuliani announcing truth isn't truth. He would not make a compelling witness in his own defense. And frankly, that's one of the reasons, Lawrence, all along, I said, I don't even know that he's likely to be pursued as a cooperating witness because it would be really hard to clean him up sufficiently to present him to a jury.